Every year, around a quarter of a million adoptions take place around the world. But what happens when these adopted children become adults and set out to find their biological families? By their nature, reunions are bound to be emotional events. But there's one unexpected feeling that's putting ordinary people into a very unusual situation. You ever been in love? That's what it's like. <laughs> you can't stay away from the person. You want to talk to them every minute. You want to be with them every minute. And, uh, and when you're not, you know, it's very uncomfortable. You want to just be with that person all the time. It's a different sort of love. It's a, it's a stronger love than, than just well, it's meeting. Well, it's not a father-daughter love. No, it's not a father-daughter love at all. I did take to her. Immediately, you might say. But of course, it dawned on me that this wasn't what you would call a natural feeling for a sister. He's not my brother to me, and he never will be. We're not the only people living or feeling these things. Well, it's, it's been devastating. Uh, there's been so much loss and, and pain. It's been like a bad dream. These are everyday people who have found themselves in a passionate affair with a long-lost sibling or parent they thought they'd lost through adoption. Most are in hiding, but others are starting to speak out about their unusual relationships and fighting for their right to stay together, forcing us to ask the question, is incest the last taboo? After Adoption in Manchester is one of four agencies in the UK who offer support for people who find themselves in one of these relationships, known as Genetic Sexual Attraction, or GSA. Janie Lloyd-Lewis, an adoptee herself, has been counselling adopted adults for 16 years. After years of meeting clients experiencing GSA, she decided to create an information pack about the issue. Janie herself is no stranger to the powerful feelings GSA can create. When I finally traced my birth mother, it was undeniably the most exciting, emotional, surreal, and wonderful feeling I've ever, ever had before or since. That feeling of intense love and very, very, very sensual. Just the touch of her when we hugged. And I think more than anything else, it was the smell. It just was familiar, even though I'd been separated from her since birth. It's not abnormal to have these feelings, but of course it is devastating when it breaks, the boundaries are broken and both sides do develop into having a sexual relationship because sadly they not only probably destroy any future relationship but for those around them. Ruth was adopted as a baby. 25 years later, never having heard of GSA and without any counselling, she tracked down her biological father who was living abroad. When we first met at the airport, he had the video camera on to sort of film the moment that he set eyes on me. It was like coming home. It's like a piece of the jigsaw fitting in and you kind of blend into each other and it's very, very powerful and it feels safe, it feels right. Oh. <laughs> is, that, is that on? Their voice, everything just... I just tuck him in. Yeah. resonates deeply within you and you've never known anything like it and you are completely unprepared and you just want to fall into it as soon as we met within the first 24 hours it was an instant recognition of something very deep something I'd never known Then we went on holiday, just the two of us, to get to know each other to a hot country. And we, we videoed that as well. It's documentation of, of a love story, really.
we didn't look alike, but there was a strong sense of unspoken connectedness that was so comforting and beautiful and effortless. We would sit for hours and just talk. Look at me. Hmm. What kind of eyes do you call those then? Oh, I don't know. Some people say they're hazel. Some people say they're hazel. And what do people who know what they're talking about say? Um. <laughs> <laughs> they can't. Can't. We were completely blown away by these feelings and very aware that we shouldn't be feeling these feelings. And yet it didn't feel wrong and it just felt so right being together and loving each other. We even felt that it, it couldn't actually possibly be true, that maybe my biological mother had got her dates wrong or she lied about who she'd, what boyfriend she'd had, and that maybe it would all turn out to be a horrible mistake and we wouldn't be related and then we could be together forever. And we really hoped and prayed for that. Toast to what did I say before? DNA. <laughs> DNA. To love. To all you. To all your sweet best dreams. And to uh, human culture and evolution. I love you. It's been the most memorable experience. My life. <laughs> Shortly after their holiday. Ruth and her father set up home together overseas, and as their relationship grew, so did the hope that they weren't father and daughter. In the end, we thought we, we'd have to know definitively. So we um, had a DNA test, and unfortunately that came back positive to being related. So that was like um, really hard. <laughs> So we started thinking, you know, making plans to, for me to leave and um, for us to, to split up. And the day before I was leaving him, I discovered that I was pregnant. So I left the next day pregnant, obviously full of all sorts of emotions and uh, overwhelmed with the whole series of events, really. It's very hot. And uh, I got back to England and, and felt my belly growing and we agonised on the phone day after day about what we should do. Because we were apart now, the baby in my belly was kind of all I had of him. And um, something and we wanted to hold on to that, you know. That separation was so hard. It's very difficult to be alone and pregnant and a long way from each other, so I went back and I was six months pregnant and I had the baby um, there with him. But after two years of living as a family, the pressure of keeping their secret proved too much for Ruth, who returned to London with their son for good. Yeah, he's a beautiful boy. He's just a lovely, normal, happy boy. Um, when I say happy, I mean, he is a happy boy, but he has had to endure, you know, missing his dad and, and being brought up sort of, you know, by me as a single mother. We told him when he was nine, nine and a half, you know, he took it on board and um, he knows the whole story and um, that's his, that's his life, you know, that's his heritage, and he copes with it remarkably well. When Ruth's son turned 13, he left London and moved back overseas to live with his father. It's been like a bad dream, you know. Um, it's like stolen uh, the joy in my life. Because uh, there's been so much loss and, and pain. It's put a great strain on my relationship with my adoptive parents because eventually I told them, and of course it's been very hard for them to deal with, because he was older, that he should have known better, and I was somehow a victim. 
but there is no victim in this situation. Uh, and of course, it's, it's, well, it's against the law as things stand. So of course, we've committed incest, which is a disgusting, heinous crime that, you know, people spit at. Yeah, who have we harmed? You know, it, we were both adults, consenting adults, and it was just, it was love. It wasn't sordid, sick stuff, it was love. Coming up in part two. I've had feelings toward my brother. Sexual feelings? Yes. I'm not surprised. 